somebody taught you that the best way to deal with pain was to isolate. So you adapted a method of ignoring stuff you couldn't fix. And I bet you you've been doing it all of your life. Since you were a little girl, since you were a little boy, you have become a master at leaving. It's just stressful, I leave. It's just confabulated, I leave. How are you going to win if you're not in the game? You don't have to have the answers. You don't have to have the solution. You don't have to have the way out. All you have to do is show up in your own life. God knows where you live. God knows where you are. God knows what you're going through. And when he comes walking in the door, make sure you are where you're supposed to be. Even if you don't like it. Even if it doesn't feel good. Even if it makes you cry. Even if it makes you hurt. Don't be a ghost in your own life. Um, I- I'm wondering today who's watching, who's, who's facing real disappointment, real pain, real discouragement, real confusion, real hurt, real wondering, uh, when is my purpose going to pick up? When am I going to actually discover why on earth I'm here? Your values in life determine your stress, determine your success, and determine your salvation. Unclear values cause confusion. They cause confusion in your life. Conflicting values in your life cause tension. Unclear cause confusion. Conflicting values cause tension. False values create deception. And the wrong values create dysfunction. A bad attitude makes you unattractive. It overrides what's on the outside. It's important to look good, to develop your skills, to get an education, but it's even more important to keep a good attitude. Like attracts like. You have to understand, you are a magnet. Whatever you are, that's what you draw to you. If you're negative, you're gonna draw negativity. You're positive, you draw positive. You're a kind person, more people are kind to you. So you're like a magnet, you know, and you gotta understand something about like attracts like. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Live like a warrior so you can die like a legend. Let us fight and fight. Don't surrender. Gotta fight. Gotta live like a warrior. You gotta be in fight mode. Warriors are vigilant. My favorite book says watch as well as pray. Yeah, you got to watch. You don't want to go to sleep at the wheel. You got to watch. You don't want to get caught up in the hoopla. Oh, get it done in 21. Yeah, you have the power to get it done in 21, but you got to watch what's going on. Your attitude is going to determine your altitude. It will determine how high or how low you go. Well, Joel, I've always been kind of negative, critical, condescending. That's just who I am. No, that's who you're choosing to be. That's not who you are. That may be how you were raised, but that's not how you have to stay. Try being kind, friendly, good natured. You'll not only enjoy life more, but you'll go further. So forget what can't be changed and focus on the future. Until you learn to do this, you're going to be unhappy much of your life. Because you hold on to the habits and you hold on to the hurts and the hang-ups and you hold on to the grief and the guilt and the grudges and that causes so much unhappiness in your life. You got to let it go. Disappointment happens for a whole lot of different reasons. Yet I think the most basic way that we could define how a disappointment takes place is disappointment is birthed from unmet expectations. Just because you're facing a disappointment today doesn't mean that you have to live defeated doesn't have to let you believe that your whole entire destiny is delayed and will never ever be reached. No, life is going to have highs and lows, peaks and troughs. 
So many people overlook this very simple quality. You don't have to figure it out. That's what freezes people. When you're trying to figure out your life all the way to the end, when you can't figure it out, it freezes you from trying it because you go, oh, well, I can't figure that out. Oh, I can't go over there because I don't know how. You don't have to know how. You have to ask, believe, and receive. And sometimes we're discouraged over what we brought on ourselves. It's not the enemy, it's our attitude. The good news is, all you have to do is make an attitude adjustment. It's not complicated. You can't change other people. You can't change how you were raised. A lot in life we can't control. But one thing we can all control is our attitude. And be vigilant because it's a new place, a new strategy. Stuff's going on. Some we're aware of, a lot of it we don't know. And we got to stay and fight mode. Why? Why? You know why I have my pictures of my children there? I, it's not about, I'm 75. I know I got more yesterdays than tomorrow's. I got to stay in fight mode. Why? I, I'm going to finish strong. Are you focusing on all, all your energies? You have a limited amount of energy. You don't have unlimited energy. Since you don't have unlimited energy, I highly suggest you don't waste any of it on something that you can't change in the past. Why in the world would you give one more second of emotional energy to something that is never going to change? It's done, it's over, it's finished. Your past is past. You gotta let it go. When you're good-natured, friendly, opportunity will come your way. People wanna do business with people that they like. Maybe it's not some other person you're just born. Maybe it's, maybe it's yourself. This is something that I struggle with in quite a massive way is that usually most of my disappointments aren't because of other people. Most of my disappointments in life are because of me. I tend to disappoint myself more than anybody else disappoints me. I, I tend to not live up to my own expectations, to my own standards, to my own values. And I find myself often beating myself up or talking down to myself. And I can find myself at times living in a cloud of disappointment that has nothing to do with anybody else. It has everything to do with the way that I look at myself. It's a major key that most people shy away from. And this is not for everybody. This is not for the faint at heart. People who have no goals and no dreams and okay with living a small life. Don't get anything done with the same mindset, the same relationships, the same vision, no direction, no purpose. They're okay with that. Am I going to live this day negative, sour, seeing the wrong, chip on my shoulder? Or am I going to live it in faith, positive, hopeful, seeing the best, being good to people? This is a choice that we have to make every day. If you're going to have a good attitude, you have to do it on purpose. Because there will be all kinds of negative things that try to creep in. If you're not proactive, if you don't choose the right attitude, then the wrong attitude will show up. Everything about this life has created a sense of urgency. And everybody has been scattered. And that's what I believe is happening right now. This is when survival instincts kicks in this is when it's real this is when it's about you your survival instincts and god your attitude is going to determine your altitude it will determine how high or how low you go well joel i've always been kind of negative critical condescending that's just who i am no that's who you're choosing to be that's not who you are that may be how you were raised. That's what you saw growing up, but that's not how you have to stay. Try being kind, friendly, good natured. You'll not only enjoy life more, but you'll go further. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. 
The good news is, all you have to do is make an attitude adjustment. It's not complicated. You can't change other people. You can't change how you were raised. A lot in life we can't control. But one thing we can all control is our attitude. Am I going to live this day negative, sour, seeing the wrong, chip on my shoulder? Or am I going to live it in faith, positive, hopeful, seeing the best, being good to people? This is a choice that we have to make every day. If you're going to have a good attitude, you have to do it on purpose. Because there will be all kinds of negative things that try to creep in. Bitterness, discouragement, self-pity. If you're not proactive, if you don't choose the right attitude, then the wrong attitude will show up. When a pilot makes a small tweak, the plane can be level, but when he tilts it just a little nose high, in a half an hour, the plane will have climbed thousands of feet in the air. I wonder what would happen in your life if you would make a small tweak. Instead of going to work sour, dreading the day, feeling unappreciated, you would show up with a smile, grateful to have the job, knowing that you're not working under people, you're working under God, that He's keeping the records. That's what allows God to change things. What would happen in your marriage? your relationships, if you'd make a small attitude adjustment. Instead of being contentious, hard to get along with, you'd start being friendly, loving, respectful. Instead of saying harsh, critical words, you'd start giving compliments, telling your spouse how much you love them, how blessed you are to have them in your life. Just a small adjustment, getting your attitude a little higher, watch those relationships begin to improve. Or maybe you've had bad breaks. Life hasn't treated you fair. And it's easy to get sour, go around with a chip on our shoulder, focus on what's wrong. That's a nose down attitude. You're choosing the direction you're going to go. Why don't you tilt it a little nose high? Yes, it was unfair, but I know God is my vindicator. I know God is fighting my battles. God promised to pay me back double for the unfair things that have happened. You keep that up, and you'll see God make up for the wrongs. The moment you change the frequency that your tower emits, the moment you change that frequency, different things come back to you. I'm telling you this how it works. If you change your attitude, change your attitude. Somebody in here needed to hear this. Somebody, you just needed that little moment, man, to get you to thinking a little bit differently so you can get the life God got for you. God wants to show you off. He wants people that he can use in that example and say, hey, this is what I do for people. If you call on me and you believe in me, this is what I do for people. I raised my hand a long time ago. Use me. Show them, show them how you take an old hoop. Tell them how you take a street boy. Tell them, show how you can take somebody ain't got no education. Take me. Take somebody that don't even talk that good. Take somebody who flunked out of school on his third marriage, lost everything, lived in a car for three years. Take me and show somebody what you can do through me. Guess what he did? He picked me up. He put me in a world I knew nothing about. God will do the same thing for you. Change your attitude, you change your altitude. Studies show that your attitude can have a greater impact on your success than your IQ. You can be extremely talented, have incredible potential, but if you don't have the right attitude, it will keep you from rising higher. And we spend all kinds of time and money making sure the outside looks good. Eating right, working out, wearing the latest fashions, and that's all fine, but too often, we're not spending any time on the inside. Nice clothes won't cover up a bad attitude. A pretty face, perfect makeup won't hide being bitter on the inside. In high school, this new girl moved into town and she was very beautiful, very attractive. And I was shy, never had the nerve to talk to her. But our senior year, we had a class together. The seating was assigned. It just so happened I was sitting right next to her. I thought I had died and gone to heaven. And the first time I sat by her, I turned, just being friendly, and said hello, nothing more. 
She looked at me like I had just insulted her, like she was totally offended. She looked away and never said a word to me the whole semester. She was beautiful on the outside, but can I tell you, she was ugly on the inside. I never saw her the same way. A bad attitude makes you unattractive. It overrides what's on the outside. It's important to look good, to develop your skills, to get an education, but it's even more important to keep a good attitude. Nobody wants to be around a sour, critical, condescending person. Colossians 3 in the message translation says, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Kindness, compassion, and humility. As parents, sometimes we pick out clothes for our children to wear. Our Heavenly Father has picked out something for us all to wear. Kindness, being good to pe people, being pleasant to be around. When you're kind, you draw people to you. When you're good-natured, friendly, opportunity will come your way. People want to do business with people that they like. When we're hiring someone, their resume tells us what they can do, what their skills are, but we always meet with them to see what their attitude is. Are they positive? Are they friendly, kind, considerate? We can find someone else with the same skills. The real question is, do they have the attitude that's going to take us higher? They may be gifted, but a negative attitude will pull the team down. Your attitude is going to determine your altitude. It will determine how high or how low you go.